Yo, it's Brian and Jim from Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and today we're checking out the Itchy and Scratchy games from The Simpsons. These games include the Itchy and Scratchy mini golf game for the Game Boy and the Itchy and Scratchy game for the Super NES. Developed by Bit Studios and published by who else? Acclaim, this game originally came out on the Super Nintendo in 1993. It was later ported to the Game Gear in 1995. There's also a planned version that was going to come out on the Genesis, but for some reason or another, it never really panned out. All right, so graphically, there's nothing offensive about this game. The game is very colorful, and it really matches the cartoon style that Itchy and Scratchy portray in The Simpsons, and I actually go above and beyond what's even animated in that show. I mean, if you look at these screens, everything has great color, good depth. There's nothing really bad here, and yeah, you might argue it's a little cartoony, but that's kind of the whole point of it. Me and Jim couldn't help but give this game eights. You know what? You don't even need a beer added to the meter. All right, the sound. It's actually not bad. Every stage has different music. The music itself, it's pretty average. It's mostly unforgettable. But actually, for a Western developed game of the time, it's not bad at all. The sound effects in the game are very simple, but they get the job done, so there's really no complaints there. Jim, listen to how funny it is when you hit the little kitties. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him so much. I hate him with the fires of a thousand fucking suns. Get it? Because they're kitties. Anyway. Uh, and actually, I do actually really enjoy the boss fight music in the game. It's above average overall. We gave it sixes. We'll add another beer just for it being a little bit too unforgettable. So as far as the control is concerned, there's really no problems here. It's definitely not perfect. There are some areas, like you can see on some of these platforms, jumping can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. It's almost, the best way we can describe it, it's a little slippery. And when you actually go to hit with your mallet, you have to hit the button and it takes a second for, act, for it to actually happen. So, tiny bit of a lag, but it's nothing you don't get used to almost immediately. Um, I gave it an eight, Jim gave it a seven. I'm gonna add a beer just because tight controls means you can drink a little bit more before you, you start feeling it. All right, the gameplay. This is a spot where I'm torn because even though I didn't like it, unlike some people, I'm not gonna kill it score-wise because it does do its job relatively well. The basic goal of the game is that you're fighting Scratchy, but you're going through this weird platforming kind of game to get there. And there's a ton of little Scratchies that run around to give you ammo that you don't immediately use, they're mainly used in boss fights. Now, each level you start off with a limited amount of ammo of a special weapon that does more damage to Scratchy, but you can't replenish it, so use them wisely. But what about the cheese that makes you like Speedy Gonzales? Uh, yes, the cheese also makes you run fast, and you can... When you're running fast, you can run over the little scratchies, but it really doesn't do too much else. Like Speedy Gonzales. Uh, anyway, the difficulty spike in this game goes up a lot with each level. I mean, in the first level or two, Scratchy's mostly a pushover. But by the time you get to the third level, good fucking luck. Because he has an unlimited amount of those special weapons that hurt you. You only have your three, and if you mess up with them, you're pretty screwed. You also have a time limit, which for the most part gives you enough time, but your mallet does such little damage that you can have a couple really close calls. We didn't particularly get that far in the game, but for what it does and what it shoots for, the game's fine. So we both gave it sixes. And you can add another two beers just because it gets really, really unfair after a while. Let's talk about the originality. Now, yes, on, on the surface, it seems like a regular platformer, but like Jim said, it's really not. The aspect of Itchy chasing you kind of makes it... Uh, the best way I'm going to describe it is an arena platformer. You're in a confined platforming area, but you do have to collect the ammo for the bosses, like Jim said, and you're constantly fighting Itchy. So it's not directly like a versus like fighter, but it adds weird elements. And then when you have the boss fight, each boss fight's a little different. You have to do something. Ultimately, you're just using the ammo, but you have to use it from different angles. And actually, this is the first Itchy and Scratchy game to come out. It's a spin-off, obviously, from this typical Simpsons game, so it is unique enough to itself. So here's our breakdown. As you can see, we both gave it sevens. Not, you know, the most unique game ever, but definitely above average. So I'm just going to add another beer, just because, eh, there's more unique things out there, but still, it's not bad. And the replayability. 
Let's end this the way we do with all the others. The most part, a lot of the replayability comes from the difficulty spike, and I hate that. I hate when games are so hard, unfairly. They have to play again and again and again. And for the most part, it really just comes down to luck more than skill. It always chaps my ass, but Scratchy's running pattern changes every single time, so not every experience will be the same, even though you're doing the same basic thing at every level. So, Brian gave it a five, I gave it a four. I'm gonna add another three beers, just because of how frustrating this goddamn game is, you probably won't even want to replay it much more after the first couple levels. Alright, so really overall, me and Jim, we didn't mind this game so much. We actually liked it a little bit more above average. This would be a game that, you know, we'd be more inclined to play than most of the Simpsons games we've done so far. Not including Simpsons Arcade Game, of course, but it's not terrible. And it's funny because we actually have seen other reviews for this game that slam it and say it's friggin' awful. We like the fact that it's a little bit of an original idea and it's definitely just an easy pick up and play while you're drinking some beers. So overall, we both gave it a six. Alright, so let's jump right in Itchy and Scratchy and Mini Golf Madness. Released in 1993, this was published by, well, once again, Acclaim. But, it was developed by Bean Software. Who's Bean Software? They're a little lesser known company, but if you ever played Shadowrun on the Super NES, you know who these guys are. Alright, so thinking about the graphics, it's Game Boy, obviously black and white, but there's a lot of detail here. And especially in all these little death scenes or animations, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, other than that, you usually have something moving in the background every once in a while or something's going on. So me and Jim, we were fine with it, especially since it's a game that's supposed to be about golf or mini golf. Overall, we both gave it a seven. I'm going to add a beer because I want to drink a beer and play a game. The sound overall, it's decently above average. The music, for the most part, it stays pretty upbeat and up-tempo. Kind of like it. Does it change for every level? Uh, are you asking me? Yes. You're the one that does sound. I know. I'm also the drunk one who does sound. We're like 12 videos in. This is a long month, man. <laughs> My hangovers have hangovers. So, the sound effects are pretty standard for the Game Boy, and the music that you get it's pretty good. We both gave it sixes. Sound department, it's pretty solid. I'll add another beer for Brian being a twat and not knowing the answer to my fucking questions. Twat's an ugly word, Jim. I don't like it. You know who uses words like that? A blub blub. You know what you are. Shut up! If you need an explanation here, I'm cutting to a video where I explain it. Click that little link. Learn about why Jim's a blub blub. Anyway, moving on to control. It's golf. You hit up and you're there, you gotta put it throughout the level. Then you have to use the A button? B button? I always get those two confused. The one on the right determines how hard you hit it using that little meter. Yeah, overall, we didn't really have a problem with it. We couldn't give it a perfect, but other than that, it's fine. So we both gave it sevens, and I'm gonna add a beer, because Jim's a blub blub. Make that two beers. Well, I guess the first thing I should get out of the way is I actually like real golf video games. But this game I like to call the golf game for people who hate golf games. Like me! Like Brian, because of course he would. The game has a lot to offer more than just the golf as we've shown you. It's kind of an action game, it's kind of a platformer, it's kind of a puzzle game, and it's kind of a golf game. It's a weird mix, it's very unique, but it actually works pretty damn well, especially for a mobile platform kind of game. There really weren't any problems we had with it, and we both gave it eights which is actually really surprisingly more than we thought we were ever going to give a game on the Game Boy for The Simpsons. You don't even need any beers. Enjoy. The originality. Hot damn. Jim just mentioned 90% of the reasons why this game's so original, but I'll make a quick reiteration. One, it's one of the first itchy and scratchy games for any console. Two, it makes golf fun. How many different type of golf games can you ever honestly say are fun? Unless, of course, you're a diehard golf fan, then more power to you. That's the only kind of video game you're going to enjoy. Whatever, I get it. But for the majority of us, how many of us are like, ooh, let me just pick up this golf game and try it out and enjoy it? Most people who don't even like sports can't stand games. But that's why you have games like NBA Jam, Mutant League Football, Blitz, all these games. Hot Shots Golf? The list I said. Anyway, 
That's why you have games like that that kind of add an arcade-ish element. And that's exactly what this did for the Game Boy and for golf games. I hate golf, but I enjoyed the shit out of this. I, I haven't seen an art golf game like this where you have to kill a little mouse that's trying to kill you. We both gave it nines, and I'm adding a beer as more of a cheers than a detriment to this game. For playability, um, actually again, this got pretty high scores from us. Like we said with all these Game Boy games, it's portable, so it gets points for that. But that's not the only reason this time. For one, every time you play, hell, every time you hit isn't going to be the same because of that sliding meter. No matter how well you plan out or time things like this, you're never going to hit it the same 100% of the time. So you're bound to have different scenarios throughout the course of multiple gameplays. It's a fun game and you will want to go back and try and do it again and again. And also the leaderboard score is safe, so you can always go back and try and beat your high score. We both gave it sevens, no problems there. Let's add one more beer just because hooray for a good game. So overall, I'm surprised. I enjoyed this game much more than I thought. I went in it with a very negative mindset. I actually enjoyed and played it actually a little more than Jim. Now here's our breakdown. You see, I gave it a six, Jim gave it a seven. Jim, like he mentioned, enjoys golf much more than I do, but still, it's a fun game. I mean, it's averages out to a 6.5. It's much higher than we were both expecting. If you see this one, definitely go ahead and pick it up. All right, so when it comes to beer pairings, I want to pair both of these games with more summery time beers. So let's start with the Itchy and Scratchy game. Let's go with Line and Kugel Orange Shandy. Why, do you ask? Well, that's a beer that's kind of underrated, similar to this game, because it's a beer that's just meant to be drank during the summer, and it's more fruity. It probably is intended to get more females to drink beer. And this game, it's nothing special, but it's nothing terrible either. People overlook that. And as far as the Itchy and Scratchy Mini Golf Madness game, I'm going to go with the Horny Goat Watermelon Wheat. This beer was kind of a letdown for me, but it's also kind of a perfect beer for a game that I had no expectations for. These two just would complement each other. If you're out on the golf course and instead of playing golf you want to play a fun game, pick up this the Mini Golf Madness and, and drink some of these beers. Enjoy your time in the sun that way. As always guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe. Check out one of our other Simpsons game reviews in the descriptions below or make sure you give us a thumbs up. See you next time.